It all started when I was 14 years old. It was a week after my 14th birthday and I lost my dad to suicide. And when I lost my dad, it was a shock. It was a shock to my family. It was a shock to the community. And it was really a shock to me. You know, he was my best friend. And to see him do what he did simply was not him. And so I was angry, I was frustrated, and I wanted to make a change. The last three words my dad said to me, which were, I love you, I said, well, you know what, if he was here, he'd want me to make a change. He'd want me to do something. I thought of P.S. I Love You Day as a crazy idea. I went to my friend Caitlin, and then I went to Dr. Bridgman, who then approved it. And then on February 11, 2011, the second Friday of February, that was the first P.S. I Love You Day. From there, you know, it exploded. I, I made a YouTube video when I was 15 with index cards before Instagram, before TikTok, before anything, really. Um, and I was just telling my story. I was just saying if one person wore purple on that second Friday of February, then my dad's memory would live on. And now, it's crazy to see. We have over 200 schools celebrating, you know, this coming Friday. And they're celebrating not only by wearing purple, but by participating in kindness activities. I mean, these kids are, you know, anywhere from five to Oh, like 90 years old, anywhere, all these people celebrating, just talking. People who lost people to suicide years ago are now sharing their stories. And I think that's the most profound impact is when someone comes up to my family and says, because of you, I shared my story. P.S. I love you, baby. God, make sure you love everybody, even yourself. It shocked all of us to a degree just to see how she was able to take this tragedy that she experienced and turn it into such a great event. And it's something that you don't see from people who were twice her age. And for her to be able to, to lead and now expand this as far as she has, it's amazing to see all the work she's been able to do. I always tell her she's an inspiration, and she really is. We started you know, collecting donations, and now we're able to donate to the Long Island Crisis Center, which we did with my high school class club, and which we encourage other schools to donate as well. They have you know, crisis text lines. They also have you know, hotline intervention numbers you can call, as well as youth groups. So we always encourage to donate to Long Island Crisis Center as well or donate to us and know that we do donate to them. So I think for anyone struggling out there, the first thing you could do is acknowledge it, share it, and share your story to others. It's not easy. With time, it will get better. It will. And it's not going to happen overnight. But by writing down your goals, by setting goals for yourself in general, by knowing that there's going to be tomorrow, that's an amazing goal in itself.